This is Geometry, Chapter 8, Section 7, in which we will study vectors. Okay. There are two kinds of quantities out there. There are scalar quantities that only have magnitude, that is to say size. And then there are vector quantities that have both a size and a direction. Okay. When the direction is in play, then you have a vector. When you're talking about something that has a direction involved, go five miles north, that's a vector. If I just say run five miles, I'm not telling you which direction to run, that's a scalar quantity. Okay. A vector we represent as what's called a directed segment. Okay. The idea is you have a fixed starting point and you have a fixed ending point. And it matters which one you start from. The vector from A to B would be exactly the opposite as the vector from B going back to A. It would be opposite directions. The arrow shows which way you're going. There's two ways to name the vector. We could name it as vector AB with a vector symbol on top. The vector symbol is basically half an arrow. Or it could be, if they gave it a name like this, little a, vector A would be the other way you could write it. Now the symbol for the magnitude, the size of the vector, is effectively putting absolute value bars around the vector. Okay. That's what, when they talk about the magnitude, they're talking about the length of it, so the absolute value of it. It's the length that's measured from the tail to the tip. The tail is the starting point, the tip is the ending point. So when they ask you for the magnitude of something, they're just asking you how long is it. The direction, you have a couple of choices of how to describe direction. One is you can measure the angle that it makes with a horizontal line, such as here. This would be a vector at 40 degrees. Or they could give it to you as an angle away from a north-south line. They would tell you it's 50 degrees to the east of north. So this angle that I'm marking here would be 50 degrees. You started from north and went eastward 50 degrees. Okay. And they use both variations in the course of their problems. So let's draw a few vectors. They tell me they want me to draw vector P that represents 40 meters per second at 120 degrees to the horizontal. So first off, I need a horizontal line. Okay. Then I need to measure around 120 degrees. So I measure around 120 degrees and make an arrow. And I have to indicate that that arrow represents 40, meet, 40 feet per second and call it vector P. Okay, notice the sequence I went through. I made a horizontal line. I marked 120 degrees made my arrow, said what the arrow represents, and then gave it the name that they asked for. If they then gave me another one just here that said also do one that's 20 feet per second, I would make one that's about half the length in whichever direction it's said to go. You have to make it kind of in the right scale. I mean, I'm not going to make you get out a ruler and measure precisely the right scales. 
but you know, be in the neighborhood. Okay, let's do another one where we need to mark the weight w, the vector w, which is weight, 55 pounds of force with a direction 25 degrees east of south. So I'm going to need a north-south line. I'm looking at the south end of it. It says to go 25 degrees to the east of that and mark my vector. And I didn't put the W on there because I was out of space. But that's where that vector would be, pointing in that direction. Okay. Again, I'm not going to get out rulers and protractors and make sure you're perfect. You know, just kind of make it look good. Now the idea here, what we're going to be dealing with, is adding and subtracting vectors. And there's a couple of different ways we can do this. One is to do it graphically, and the other is to do it with arithmetic. We'll do the arithmetic later. Right now we're going to do it graphically. They want me to add these two vectors and when I do that, I get what's called a resultant vector. Okay. So they want me to add vector C plus vector D. And I've got my two vectors here. The way you add these is to start with the first vector, which I just put out there, and then from the tip of that vector, put the second vector. All right, see what I just did? Brought the second vector and lined it up on the tip of this one. Now I'm ready. And I'm going to make the resultant a little heavier line to go from where we started to where we ultimately end up. Okay. That's your resultant vector, that darker, thicker vector. We started with the first one, then we added the second one on. Okay. Let's do another one where we have to subtract. If we're going to subtract the vector, we're going to be flipping it the other direction. So again, I'm going to start from vector C. And this time, instead of going in the direction D was pointing, I go in the opposite direction. So if I put that tip to tip, that would effectively turn the vector around. And so this is my resultant vector, C minus D. Okay. When we put these things on a coordinate graph, we put it in standard position so that the initial point, the tail, is on the origin. When we do that, we're in business because then we can write component form that looks kind of like an ordered pair, except it's not parentheses. It's these little pointy, greater than, less than kind of guys. They call them vector brackets, if you care. When they give us the vector in component form, what they're telling me is the horizontal part of it is x units, and the vertical is y. And we can find component form easily. All we need to do is take where we started and where we finished and subtract. x2 minus x1 will tell me the, com the horizontal component of the vector. y2 minus y1 tells me the vertical part of the, of the vector.
So let's find the magnitude and direction of a vector, vector r, that has component form negative 1, 4. Okay. We're looking at this vector. We started at 0, 0, and we went to negative 1, 4. Well, we can find the magnitude easily. All we need to do is the distance formula. And since we're working with zeros, that makes the arithmetic a lot easier. Okay. And the square root of 17, if you do a decimal, is 4.123. That's the magnitude of it. To find the direction, we have to use trig. We have a, vac a triangle. You'll see the triangle here. It has a, a vertical part of 4 and a horizontal part over here of 1. Well, the angle in question is here. Opposite and adjacent sounds like tangent. I'll turn it into a decimal and then do inverse tangent and find out that the angle is a little over 14 degrees. And where is that angle? Starting at north, we have to go a little bit west to get to it. Okay. Now the last thing we have to do, I told you we could add vectors two different ways. We could do it graphically or we could do it with arithmetic. We're going to do the arithmetic part, and it's as easy as it looks. If they give me two vectors in component form and ask me to add, all I have to do is add the x parts and then add the y parts. If they ask me to subtract, I just subtract them. If they ask me to multiply by a number, I just distribute that number in. Okay. Component arithmetic is nice. So let's do a couple here. We've got three vectors, r, s, and t. They want us to do t minus r. So we'll take the t values minus the r values. 1 minus 3, negative 2 minus 4, gives me a vector of negative 2, negative 6. Let's do s plus 2t. We'll take s plus twice what t is. So 5 plus 2 times 1, 4 plus 2 times negative 2. Arithmetic cleanup gives me 7 and 0. And finally, let's just do s minus t. That'll be the s values minus the t values. And arithmetic gives me 4, 1. So vectors. There's a lot going on, but not a lot of hard, heavy lifting. You have to be able to recognize direction, do a little trig to find the angle, and arithmetic. As always, if you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in, and we will see you in class.